Hopefully we won't shortchange short change Daniel Cormier today, nor Jared Cannonier and some of the other Knights big Knights big winners. But I, I need this segue to Israel Adesanya because our yes. guest pick for Denver is coming up soon. And this is a guy who made his UFC debut in February. If anybody is going to challenge DC for fighter of the year in 2018, it's Israel Adesanya. He is 4-0 in the UFC. Big win over Derek Brunson. It came with nine seconds to go in the opening round by TKO. Adesanya is all the rage right now, and rightfully so. He was all the rage coming in, Ken Flo. And I think when you look at the body of work, not just the kickboxing and boxing background, but now the mixed martial arts body of work. He could have come to the UFC several years ago. Joe Silva wanted this guy very badly, right? He bided his time. He waited till he was ready. Money wasn't an issue, so he wasn't in any rush to get to the big show. And now over the course of nine or ten months, we've seen him improve dramatically in a lot of areas just with the strength of four training camps. So I think Adesanya might be one fight away from a championship fight. He might be the backup when Whitaker and Gastelum fight for the UFC middleweight title sometime first quarter 2019. This kid is an absolute superstar. I think he'll be headlining a UFC pay-per-view by this time next year for sure. Um, one, one of the more impressive performances at UFC 230, in my opinion. And, um, I, you know, you have to credit his management and his coaching squad as well for what they've done with him because for a couple reasons. Not only are they taking the right fights in the right order uh, to get him the right experience to build up to this championship run, um, but he's getting better. He really is getting better. I think Derek Brunson was no doubt, in my mind, a tougher challenge than even Brad Tavares. And maybe he's not as well-rounded as a Brad Tavares, um, but he has fought some very uh, tough competition and has some good wins over some elite guys. Um, And... You know, he was able to get to that clinch. He was able to get to his strong positions. And Israel Adesanya was able to stop every single takedown attempt. Um, And granted, I think Derek Brunson was a little intimidated. He seemed a little gun shy out there. He was shooting from a little far away. But he was still able to get to the clinch and still able to get some good scoring positions. And Adesanya just would not let him get to those uh, positions and finish them. Um, so huge credit to Adesanya, who's, who looked way more comfortable when it came to those wrestling exchanges. He seemed very confident. And then once he was able to utilize his striking, it was all over for Derek Brunson. So in terms of Adesanya's future, Kenny, certainly he has a style and a disposition that has really endeared him to fight fans around the world. I think there's a fight IQ element to him that maybe he doesn't get enough credit for. I even thought in his UFC debut, even though it was Rob Wilkinson, I don't care who it is, a guy with a UFC contract who tries to take you down 16 times, you stuff 13 of them, Mm -hmm. I'm giving you some modicum of credit for it. I don't know if the next fight for him is going to be the title, right? I thought, you know, a a Weidman fight would have had legs potentially if Chris had won because Adesanya had called for that fight but said he wanted to get through Derek Brunson first. I think if you're Jacare Souza, you're not going near Israel Adesanya at 38, almost 39 years old. I think for Jacare, you're going to try like hell to wait and have your next fight be for a UFC championship. But for Israel Adesanya, there weren't a lot of people saying that if he could knock out Derek Brunson, he would be in the championship conversation, Kenny, and... Yet, don't you think he kind of is, given that performance and given that this was sort of billed as, as moving night in the middleweight division? I think he's, he's certainly in the conversation. Should he have that next title shot? I don't think so yet. And listen, I think he yeah. matches up extremely well against Robert Whitaker. But uh, give him one more fight. I, I think that fight against Paulo so. Costa is, is interesting. I, I would love wow. to see that fight. Uh, Costa, you know, is going to get in his face and try to knock his head off. And I think that also brings out the best in Adesanya in a lot of ways. Um, so I, I think that would be a fantastic fight. Um, so yeah, a, a little bit more experience because I think the whole thing is really building up that level of experience, uh, in the octagon before you get that title shot. So when you do have it in front of you, you could take it right away and hold on to the belt after you get it. So I think he right. is building up that right experience. He is going against good wrestlers, but you know, certainly don't put him up against Yo Romero, for example, at 185 right. Right. in his next one. Right. I think that would might be a little bit too much. But maybe not. I don't know. Maybe he does fight a guy like Apollo Costa, get that experience, maybe fight a Robert Whitaker. You know, by that time, he, he's ready to take on whoever it is. How about the fact that he wants Weidman, though? One of the most, actually, had he taken him down, had he taken Jacare down twice, he would have become the most accomplished takedown artist in UFC middleweight history, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's interesting that Weidman was the name on the tip of his tongue, right? Because if there's a wrestling challenge in that division, 
I mean, doesn't that conversation sort of start with, with Romero and Weidman? Uh, without a doubt. And I think Weidman uh, is a very dangerous style matchup for him. And the fact that he called him out and the fact that, you know, Chris is, has been struggling in his last five fights um, is an interesting choice. I don't know if that's the choice. Uh, Chris is a tough style matchup, and Chris yeah. kind of would have nothing to lose in that one. But, right. um, yeah, I don't know if that's the play, though. All right. Yeah, I don't. I don't either. I just yeah. think it's interesting. Right, coming off a loss, I'm not sure that that is the way they are going to go. Well, it's very interesting, and we're going to table the Cannoneer stuff in a little bit. Nine years old, Ken Flo. I'll let you get back in here in a second. But yeah. I think on Souza, he knew if he was ever going to fight for the UFC championship in his life, he had to get this one. Right, he's going to be 39 years old next month, and he feels like Ray. He beat the greatest middleweight in UFC history on Saturday night, right? Like he feels that's the gravity of this accomplishment for him. And I know that's an entirely different conversation. Um, but I just felt like you got an urgent jacare that, as Kenny said, we may have never seen before. And, and even that guy was getting beat pretty handily on the feet by your guy. So I think hey, in terms of Chris's yeah. striking, I don't think it's ever looked better. Yeah. Yeah. No, look, I was proud of the guy. We had, we had a really great camp. Um, and, and that's it, man. You know, it is, I thought like to me, I saw that fight going away the first round. That in my head, if I had a script it, I thought he was going to pot shot him with that jab all night long, which he was kind of doing, and look for a couple of big shots here and there, and sit down on some punches. And uh, I also thought he would have went for you know I think he he was I thought he would have went for a, a couple of takedowns just so we could fake the takedowns to open up the hands. I mean that was kind of what we talked about. But I think he felt so comfortable in there that he. He didn't even find that necessary, but I'd have to talk to him. I only spoke to him briefly uh, just to make sure he was all right, and I didn't want to bother him. And, you know, he, he's, he's pretty fucking bummed out because I think, uh, again, I think things were going good, and it just that just went bad. So, Well, well Ray, Ray, one of the reasons we, we love to have you on the podcast every week is because of your honesty, and, and I want to know what you think of that stoppage by Dan Mergliata. Jacare Souza would seem to be kind of upset about it. He felt that it was probably uh, a little bit late. Uh, what did you think about that? You know, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to surprise you on this one because mm -hmm. I know I've always been critical of Dan, but I do think in my I do think he wanted to give him every last uh, effort. Uh, yeah. To win, it was a, it was a, the magnitude of that fight was pretty big. So I think I'm, I'm gonna, I don't even know if this is true, but in me, in my mind, I think he wanted to give him every last possible chance, and I like that for my fights. I, had, I talked to Aya Quinter about it last night. They, you know, these guys want to die. They don't want anything stopped. And I think because look, he sat down on his ass, which is always a good sign. He didn't face plan, mm -hmm. and then right. he did go right for the leg. So until the point I saw him get hit once, and he wasn't responsive. You know, so I don't think he took any unnecessary damage, and I think he gave the, you know, look in Gastelum, he got he got sat down kind of the same way, and he survived, and he went on to right. win the fight. So Good I think point. to Dan's credit, if he's thinking like that, I think you know let's give him every last chance. I just saw him in his previous fight, come back and right. win off the same thing. So Good I know point. he got criticized for that, but for me as a coach, I want to give. I know Chris was in great shape. I want to give him every last chance, and i i i think i think he i think he did the right thing, and he didn't get hurt after that too much because Jack raised a gentleman. So I think at the end of the day, it all worked out. He might want to go back and look for previous fight, you know, future fights to see if maybe he wants to stop it short. But I don't think he wanted to stop that fight too short because that would have been a disaster. You well, know, of course, and was, I the guy was I, winning the fight, and you know, right. Yeah, so I, I like the I, fact that he has a good knowledge of the fighters. Dan Mergliata does, and he understands that Chris has had a penchant for rallying through adversity. And you're right that Chris exactly. didn't get severely injured thereafter. But what if he had, right? And that's my issue, right? When I see that type of knockdown, this is what happens in boxing, right? A guy gets a, what, in my opinion, was a concussion. And then as long as he can stand the fuck up in 10 seconds, he can come up and get another concussion and then go get your CTE, right? So largely, I, I think maybe I can't, came down too hard on Dan on the broadcast. I like that he was aware of the athlete. And you're right, Chris did seem to recover in a minute. But I just think it's fortunate that there wasn't more damage sustained exactly. after the fact. Exactly. But, you know, I, I, I agree with you. Look, it's it's okay like for you guys to come down because by doing that, you do kind of keep that bubble, you know, in the public eye, and we want to make sure to fight a safety. But, you know, when you talk to these guys, because, look, even, you know, I got criticized for the Rockhold fight. Did that go too long? Dude, these guys, 
they're a different breed, man. They want to fight to the death. And, yeah, we are there to protect them. But when you know a guy and you know what he could do and you've seen him in training and sometimes, you know, guys that come back and they win fights. And, look, even if a guy comes back and wins fights, right, that doesn't mean it's good for him either. Mm-hmm. Of course. You know, but this mm-hmm. is the sport we're in, man. We're in a right. crazy right. – we're in a right. fucking crazy sport, man. Yeah. And oh, if you're, the sport if in the you're world, even man. worried about it, I wouldn't get into this sport. I mean – I'm, I'm always going to say this, so, like, whether one thing is right or wrong, getting hit in the head is just not good for you, ever. That's true. If you bump that your head true. into the refrigerator, going to, <laughs> right. you know. Heading a soccer the, ball. Not, yeah, yeah, not good. It's just not good. Yeah. So yeah. this is what we live with. These guys know the risks. I think the more you get the weight cut down and your brain's not dehydrated, because I, I think, like, the brain is the last place to get the fluid when you're rehydrating. So, again, another good question is maybe 205 is a better fit mm. because I don't see this ever happening in a gym. Like, I'm telling you, ever. You know, so. But this was all indications were, and you would know better than anyone else, he looked to be in the shape of his life. I mean, this was an outstanding training camp. It seemed to be the best he looked on the scale to me, seemed to be an outstanding cut. I got to think he has some pause to move up after a cut that goes that well, no? Well, I agree with you 100% because I'm telling you the weight cut went good, but that would be something we have to really talk to him. Look, and Kenny, you know this. No weight cut. If if, if the average person watches a fighter make weight, <laughs> they're going to be mortified. Would that yes. be a correct statement, Kenny? Uh, yeah, no they, matter- they would absolutely be uh, mortified and horrified. It, it, it's really tough on your body either yeah. way. Even if it's like way, it's a great what- cut, it's still – Really yeah. freaking difficult, something that maybe only 1% of the human population can right. actually do. Exactly. A great yeah. If I tell the average person, don't eat for fucking six hours, <laughs> they might fucking kill me. You know what I mean? Right. Like, exactly. Even a good weight cut to yeah. the average guy is like, this is torture. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to say this. To me, the weight cut went great. The training camp was phenomenal. Everything was good. I'm not an expert on those last five days. I'm just not, man. I've right. seen it. I have a lot of experience l- witnessing it. But if you're asking me, do I know exactly what the results on the body are? I don't. So right. maybe 205 might be a place where he comes in just stronger, more coherent, you know, everything, all those attributes that go with that. So I don't know. I really don't know. But well, I know. Every, even and it's a good of- reset button, too. It's a good reset button to, yeah, to change yeah. weight classes. So yeah. who knows? Look, yeah. look, look at Gastelum. Look at Whitaker. These are guys that right. fought at 170. They're having right. the time of their lives at 185. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, and maybe, Chris, maybe, maybe, even off, yeah, I'm just saying, even off a loss, given his resume, he could find himself in a light heavyweight title eliminator against the number two guy in the world, Anthony Smith, and fans aren't going to bat an eye at that, right? You could be one win away, not that you're in any great rush to share the octagon with John Jones or Alexander Gustafson necessarily, but it could happen pretty expeditiously for Chris if he does move up, given what the top five looks like right now. Exactly, and the older those guys get, maybe the weight cut starts to affect them more. Yep, you know what I mean? very this fair. Is a, this is a really crazy thing, those weight cuts, and I'm saying... The weight cut. When I say the weight cut went well, I'm telling you, if you're the average guy, you know, I think I was talking to Mark Lamont about this because he he comes to the weight cuts because he reports it. Dude, it's 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 brutal. It's fucking yeah. brutal. I'm telling you, the weight cut was good, but if you ask his wife, it wasn't good. Well, right. And <laughs> I, I'm basing it on my conversation with him, which was Wednesday, and also the no. fact that his eyes, yeah, no, his yeah, no eyes just looked. It. Much better to me, not so black. Not that he was smiling up there. But, yeah, for guys like Rockhold and Weidman, there's nothing. He, I mean, for, dude, for Rockhold, it is absolutely brutal make, making yeah, 100 I mean, Look, he was out. very, very um, dedicated to this fight. Yeah, I'm saying he was – we were training at 203, 202, 204. 20, he never went above 205, I don't think. For I mean, he, yeah. was, he, was, he was really good, man. Yeah. But, again, yeah. I, I'm just saying, and I don't know this. I'm just – I, I don't – we don't really know what happens when you do that to your body. You know what I mean? Right. Some guys look good. Some guys could say they feel good. Right. Inside, we don't really know. And that, that's maybe one of – I'm just offering it up. That might be one thing that – who knows? Maybe 205. Look, I would think like a 195 would be a perfect weight for him. Right. You know, right. like 200 would be phenomenal. You know, right. I always said that there's a lot of fighters that 160 would make a big difference or 65, you know, instead of 55. But, you know, it's – like that, that boxing, you know, years ago when boxing was very competitive, man, a guy tried to move up from 130 to 135. That was hard to do. 
because the level of skill was so competitive that even that little weight made a big difference. So these guys are giving up 15 pounds and they got to get that. I don't know. It's it's tough, man. I, I, I would like to see more weight classes for sure.